Hey everybody, welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm your host, Rick. I'm Mia. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to be painting, painting some Warlord Minis, is that correct? Yep, Warlord Games. Uh, these are some of the uh, US infantry nice. uh, they're for bolt action, which is their World War II uh, skirmish game. Nice. So it's definitely cool. I see you brought in some uh, already completed miniatures. Yep. Uh, Up on the uh, the spinner there. Yeah. Our so Elon Tesla. Or <laughs> the, Elon, the Elon Musk oh, Tesla right. spinner. Elon is is his older brother. This is Eli's. Oh, <laughs> Eli <laughs> Tesla. Eli Tesla. Okay. <laughs> but less successful. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Going back to these models, um, just recently I painted up uh, a whole bunch of them, mm -hmm. about almost 40 of these models. Wow. Um, I had to uh, basically get them finished for a section of my book nice. about um, painting to deadlines, mm -hmm. batch painting, that kind of thing. Right. So uh, what I thought we'd do today is sort of run through that process of, of how I did it, nice. um, except we're going to be working with one model each. Right. So our idea here is we're going to go through and paint the base coats on everything. Okay. So paint on the jackets, the helmets, the face, the hands, the pants, the boots, the gaiters, all that sort of fun stuff. And then uh, once all that's dry, we'll hit it with a wash of uh, Agrax Earthshade okay. from GW or Strong Tone from uh, the Army Painter. I'd say, could we do one with and... Oh, Agrax yeah, yeah. wants to kind of show a difference? If yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah that'd That's be cool. kind of cool. They're going to end up looking pretty similar, but uh, okay. both those those colors are very uh, very similar. But uh, yeah, so what we've, we've got um, out on our palettes are a mix of different um, colors that are appropriate for these World War II Americans. Uh, we've got a, um, what have we got? Brown violet, which is what we'll be painting the helmets. And that is... Uh, we have a U.S. Uh, dark green, which we'll be painting the pants. Them out in the front? Oh I yeah, that's a close cam on them. How about that? So clever. There we go. U.S. dark green. And where is the khaki? Yep. Okay, the khaki is here, and that we'll be using that for the jackets and the the gaiters and the backpacks and all okay. the uh, the webbing. That's actually the color I'm using right now. Cool. Is the khaki. I'm trying to share this on my Instagram so we can get my Instagram people to start watching Painting Happy Little Minis. Oh, cool. That'd be sweet. So for those tuning in on my Instagram, this is Painting Happy Little Minis, and we're painting some miniatures here. Yeah, little, little soldiers. Little soldiers. Yeah. And not only are you painting, but Dave is taking you through. Yes, yeah. and learning from a master. Special episode. Special it episode, is. yep. <laughs> so, like you, you, you mentioned uh, using the khaki on the, the jacket, the backpack, and the gaiters around the, the between the boot and uh, And the pants. And the yep. pants. So around the calf. Yeah. Yep. So usually, um, I mean, boots would be great. Okay. Like you could wear boots sort of all the time when you're in the in the field. Yeah. Um, but uh, boots were fairly expensive at the time yeah. to make, and uh, shoes were a lot easier. So they'd use gaiters to, uh, which were essentially canvas, right? Uh, wrapped around, buttoned up at the side to um, protect the uh, the legs from uh, scrub and that sort of thing. Underbrush, the thorns, or underbrush. Metals. They're brushing through. Hmm? Where the khaki go? Where the khaki go? Oh, it's out the front here. Oh, there we go. There we go. And this is for the, the khaki goes on the shirt. Uh, right? Yep. So the, the, jacket the jacket and all of the uh, the pouches and so on. Just so you guys know, uh, Carl is here. Peter is here. One Inch Heroes. Hey Becky, you know. Matthew, Scott, Matthias, Matthias. Um, and we have two questions. So, right. okay. why do you store your paints upside down? Um, so. In this, it's actually set up, there's a little holes to, so that the topper will fit in there. Because if I have it like this in here, you can't see the color. From the and top. It, but on the bottom, upside down, I can t tell all the colors that are in my tray. So I can see that these are green, this is a blue, gold, orange. So. And then also, where is that big shelf from? This is from a company called Impudent Mortal. 
Um, they are a company out of, uh, I want to say, uh, yeah. Georgia? I think so. I think um, they're in Atlanta or around the Atlanta yeah. era, area. Uh, and they make this. They make uh, a wider one and a uh, bunch of like terrain too. Like this. Yeah, loads of great terrain. Yeah, the, the, what is this, this billboard right here is from them as well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, loads of great uh, MDF laser cut, laser cut MDF train. Yeah. Are uh, they the one that did the when you when we did Star Wars Legion, Dave, and you brought that was, was that, uh, that was Death Ray Designs. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Impudent Mortal's actually sending like, a few more things for us to play with. Oh, cool. Uh, more sci-fi. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Did you see them at, uh, were they at No, they sent, they sent me a message. And like, hey, we'd like to send you a couple things. Very I was cool. like, hey, I'm never going to stop you from doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Because I like your product. Also, one inch hero says, I have returned from uh, North Carolina this week, and apparently none too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Getting they, out of there before the hurricane starts. We got a party about to start down there. Good time. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got to talk to Drew about some stuff, don't we? Uh, we do. Off camera. Off camera. Okay. You hear that, Drew? We got stuff to talk about. <laughs> Things are happening. Yeah. Stuffs are coming. But uh, should we let people know where we were this weekend? I don't know. I think we did last week. We let them know. We let them know where we're going. Yeah, where we were going. Yeah. Where were we? Fort Wayne, Indiana. Beautiful downtown Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> yes. So, I had to get that in a bit there before Rick said something else about Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So we went to Fort Wayne, Indiana for the Alliance Open House, which is a trade show for the board game industry where uh, Alliance, as the distributor, sets up a, an event where publishers and retailers can come together, show the retailers a bunch of new product coming out, uh, get the publishers and retailers talking about, you know, how to best market the product and um, all those kinds of great conversations that need to be had between all three entities. And we were there doing video content, so over the next week and a half or two, you're going to see a lot of interviews showing off some really cool games popping up on our, on our pages and on our YouTube channel, so you don't want to miss any of that. But the best thing of it was we got to see some new games. Yep. Uh, demo a bunch of stuff. Demo a bunch of stuff, um, and have great conversations ourselves with both publishers and retailers. And for all the retailers that were there and that are following us that uh, hadn't been before, if you're watching us, thank you so much for for uh, jumping on board and becoming part of the community. Yep. And letting us uh, be a part of your community back there at your store. Uh, it is super awesome. Very definitely. Yeah. So, what was your favorite thing you saw there, Dave? Uh, I'm not sure. You always put me on the spot. Yep. What's the best thing? What's the favorite thing? Or, um, or the, it doesn't have to be the best. Just what were some things that you really stuck out to you? There was a, there was a lot of great stuff. Um, we were very excited to see. I enjoyed um, what I got to do. I think I got to do about seven or eight interviews. Yeah. Uh, one of them was with uh, Adam's Apple Games. Okay. Uh, and we talked about um, his game uh, Sword Crafters. Okay. Which is one that I'm really super excited to get for uh, for Lucy for Christmas. Nice. But it's basically one where uh, there's like a, uh, not quite a bidding mechanic, but mm -hmm. essentially like a bidding mechanic um, to acquire different pieces of the sword. Okay. That you, that you build and slide together. They're basically uh, cardboard tiles. Okay. Cardboard tiles that build up into a, building this awesome sword. <laughs> Um, with gems, sort of encrusted right. in gems. It looks really cool. Okay. But I think that's <clears> going to be a lot of fun. But Dave, you're forgetting to mention that it was it's an actual three-dimensional sword that you're crafting. It's not like a flat sword. Yeah. I guess I I was thinking it was three-dimensional in my head, but I, I may not have said that. I don't directly. think you mentioned it. But yes, three-dimensional sword. So, uh, yeah. So in the end, you could have a sword fight with it. I, wow. Yeah. Exactly. I have a painting cool. question for you. Oh, good friend. What is a painting handle? Someone just asked if I've ever thought about using a painting handle. Oh. What is Oh. Uh -huh. Try using that. Yeah, what is this thing? Cool. 
So yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here, hold that. Right. Pull them out too. So. Uh huh. So there we go. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you guys never told me about this wonderfulness? We've been doing painting happy little minis for how long? We've been doing it wrong this whole time. I know. This whole time. Oh. Well, thank you for the suggestion. Yep. For those of you just tuning in, this is Painting Happy Little Minis. Um, I'm probably going to end this stream in a little bit, so you're going to have to go to their Facebook page to watch the rest of it. So. Excellent. Game yeah. Trade Media. This is just a teaser. Teaser yes. for you guys. <laughs> also, Walt Long Longs said, and they went out in the mail for you today. From oh, the, cool. Excellent. Thanks, Walt. From yep. Walt Langans. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> from from Infinite Mortal. Mortal. Yep. yep. Also, Scott Cunnington says, nice tank. Oh, cool. Thank you. It is a nice tank. Yeah. It's so hard to get a like close up on it. The inside okay. of the cool. sleeves. <laughs> so, in the demo hall, so every night at the Alliance Open House, there's a demo hall where the uh, publishers can go, or set, or the publishers set up in different zones, uh, and then the retailers come in and they demo the different games to get a better understanding for you know not just to see new games, or, but also how to better market them or see if they're even going to be something that their community at their stores will like gravitate towards. Yep. And uh, got to play a, a few. Like um, One of them was a game called Orbis, okay. uh, which is coming out from, uh, uh, it's one of the Asmodee uh, companies. And that one was a lot space of fun. Space Cowboys, I believe. Yeah, I think it is Space Cowboys, yeah. yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Got to look at some new D&D product, um, Dungeon Mayhem, a card game, which is kind of cool, by Watsi, or Wizards of the Coast. And a game that I got to destroy Dave at. Yeah! Hilarious, called Coma Ward, where you play a, a coma patient who wakes up with am amnesia, uh, and everybody is in that same boat. But it's uh, got this like very dark and horror-type theme to it. It's like spooky. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that was great. That was a lot of fun. It was. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, Rick, myself, and uh, Jason from Realmsmith TV. Yep. We got to play, and that was a, that was a lot of fun. It was. It was very uh, story, story yeah. driven. Yeah, very. Uh, there's a lot of narrative to it. Um, they were saying like over a hundred thousand words These in narrative are. content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was showing these off and everyone's like, oh, good job. I'm like, no, this is not me. This is <laughs> Dave. <that> one. <laughs> Dave is amazing. He actually writes books on um, painting miniatures. So I'm learning from the elite. So yeah, I didn't do this one. That was him. I'm Mine is Using this <laughs> so far. That is looking cool. Yeah. Well, the, the cool thing about um, taking this approach rather than painting like a section by section and shading and highlighting is that you can get everything nice and neat first, mm -hmm. just across like 10 models, 20 models. Mm -hmm. In uh, the case of the models that I did, I did, painted the base coats on all 39 models first. Oh, wow. Yeah, it just works like through. mass production painting. Yep. Went through and did all 39 jackets, all 39 faces, all 39 Oh, my models. God. It was, uh, was kind of crazy. What uh, is the next, uh, the color for the pants is what? Uh, U.S. dark green. Dark okay, green. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. And uh, yeah, most of these colors are from the uh, Vallejo model color range. Okay. Um, but I think later, later this year, Warlord are releasing uh, set, sort of paint sets. Oh, okay. With uh, in conjunction with the Army Painter, that'll be specific to each of the different uh, nations that they come in. So. Oh, okay. I think they're doing the first, the major four, which are the U.S., um, the British, the Germans, and the Russians. Okay. So. The, the main the main four belli belligerents, yeah. Bob Fran yeah. says, paint, bu paint like the wind, Big Rick. <laughs> <laughs> also, James is here. Keith is here. All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Michael Patrick O'Connor said, speaking of mail, I got the dragon last week. Nice. And thanks, GTM. Um, cool. Peter asks, does Warlord do anything in World War I tanks? Uh, they do not, as far as I'm aware. I don't think they do. I think uh, the best way to find out, because we probably aren't 100% sure, uh, if you go to the Warlord, you know, look up Warlord games on, on the internet, yeah. and just look at their product line. 
and see what they got. I'm sure yep. if they don't have it, um, you can probably find good models from other yep. companies. But other manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, it's a company called Great War Miniatures. Okay. Do uh, some great stuff in 28 mil. Uh, the uh, Battlefront. Metalfront Miniatures, who make uh, Flames of War, okay. do a 15mm uh, World War One game. Okay. That's got to be cool. tiny. Called the Great War. Hmm? Those must be, like, super tiny. What are these? But these are 28s. Yeah. So, yeah, imagine something that's sort of half this size. Nope. <laughs> we'll bring some of those in one day. What? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to end this on my stream. So if you guys want to keep watching, go to Facebook and search for Game Trade Media and go watch on their page because we're going to continue the live stream over there. Thanks for tuning in and go watch these guys and watch us finish painting. Bye. Yay. Oh, yes. Bye. So, <laughs> because we, we've been talking about what, we, what we've been doing, Mia, let's yeah. find out what you've been doing. You just went to a show recently, right? Um, let's see. What did Since I have? I last recently? saw you. Out uh, west. Oh, yeah. I did... Uh, it was a toy expo, oh, okay. which was my first time doing a toy expo, uh, and it was kind of deadly for me because it was just toy. toys everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was like Thursday, I was already negative 150 because <laughs> I was Makes like sense. already like buying stuff. Um, so that was fun, and I'd never been to the Bay Area. Okay, it was a lot colder than I was expecting for California. Well, I went in thinking, oh, it's California. I'm going to pack, like, summer dresses and, like, T-shirts. And then every night I was like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was like me at uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yes. I thought, it's still summer. It's going to be warm there. That's what I thought. <laughs> no, not so well. I packed my summer dresses. I, <laughs> I was shivering. Yeah, it was, it was cold over there, but it was fun. Good. What, what was the, the, the big takeaway from that show, though? For you, uh, I need more money to buy toys. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Excellent. So was it all uh, sort of collectibles? And there was a lot of collectibles, a lot of Funkos. Mm. Um, they did have some gaming booths, like um, board games. Okay. Uh, so it was, it was pretty cool. Nice. Kind of jealous because my little sister went to PAX. Oh, PAX Prime. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good show. I want to go to PAX Unplugged. Yes. Now you should all be going to PAX Unplugged. We're gonna, they're not a sponsor by any means, but you should we're, go. <laughs> we're going to be We're going to be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris O'Reilly says, and Dave has some nice sundresses. Oh, I bet. I do. <laughs> totally. Big takeaway for me about Fort Wayne yeah? was that it's incredibly quiet on the streets at night. Yes. Yeah. It's a little spooky. Hmm? It's a bit spooky. It is a bit spooky. When you're used to more noise. More of a bustle in yep. a city. Yeah. Also, Gerard Krauss says, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. I'm glad to be with you in, he's from Luxembourg. Wow. Oh, wow. Excellent. Thanks for joining us. Also, Timothy Colonna hey, says Tim. that they do not have World War I miniatures. Ah, uh, Warlord oh. Games, right. yeah. Yep. Confirms that. Also earlier, he said hello. Sorry. Cool. I missed that. <laughs> no worries. So this is the first time I've ever painted uh, anything from Warlord. So th yep. These are actually really well done miniatures. Yeah, they're really, really nice um, plastic minis. Yeah. Sorry, you were gonna say I interrupted you. No, you're. Well, it, it, also because it's like we had mentioned that when we were cho choosing which miniatures. Uh, when I was in the Navy, the, the weapon of the, that this particular uh, soldier was carrying was the one that we would qualify with for um, our rifle uh, qualifications. Okay. The uh, M1 Grand. M1 Grand, right. And uh, it was a lot of fun to see this, this particular weapon system here. So. On a tiny miniature? On a tiny little man. Tiny dude. Yeah. So. Tiny little bloke. There you go. <clears throat> Uh, and Mia chose the uh, Thompson, mm -hmm. Thompson submachine gun. I just like that he looked very angry and determined. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of yelling. You got some great, uh, great character on the faces. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the helmets are in what color again? Uh, the helmets are in here we go, brown violet. All right, thank you. 
Um, you can, you could use like a, an olive shrub for the helmets. Um, so they end up, I didn't find they end up a little bit too dark for my okay. liking. All right. So I think with the, um, the brown violet, you get a, a bit more of a contrast. Okay. Which is cool. And then the boots. Um, I'd go with the, probably, yeah, probably that, that one. one. Yep. What's that? Probably the uh, mahogany brown. But yeah, you could use the mahogany brown or the red leather or that sort of thing. See, I like this. For this is different than, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because like yeah. normally it's like, do whatever. And I'm like, paint by numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is almost a paint by numbers thing. Um, one of the, the fun, fun parts, mm -hmm. well, the, it's, it's a sla fun slash frustrating parts when you're painting historical miniatures is trying to get things, whether you want to try and get things absolutely correct or as close as possible mm -hmm. to what they would have looked like. But then realizing, of course, that somebody who's out in the out in the field for six months with the same pair of pants, those pants aren't going to look like they did when they rolled off the manufacturing, yeah. sort of the manufacturing uh, off the sewing machine. Yeah, um, the helmets are going to look different. The um, all that sort of stuff. As I was painting the guys who were on the spinner here and the rest of the army, um, I spoke to a friend of mine, um, John Dickerman in California. Mm -hmm. Who does? He's basically like a picker for World War II memorabilia okay. and uh, uniforms and that sort of thing. So I went through, had a great conversation with him about different colors. I started with like, okay, well, what color should I do pants? And he's like, well, are they wool or cotton? Oh my god! And I was like, oh, yes. they're plastic. <laughs> <laughs> they're plastic on the little dudes. And he was like, well, d it depends on when, what theater they were in, or what time of year it was. So if summer cotton pants, if it was winter, woolen pants. Wow. Um, but because he's a collector yeah. as well, he has all these things. Hey, essentially, we were just chatting away on Facebook and like a photo would pop up and be like, oh, fantastic, here are two different colored pants. And I'm like, oh, is one of them cotton and one of them wool? And he's like, no, both of them are the wool pants. So I was what? like, oh, great, two different colors. Dang it. <laughs> and uh, then he sent me a picture of the cotton pants. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he was like, oh, wait, are they HBTs? What? Or a herringbone yeah, twill, twill. Yeah. which uh, I said, well, I, I'm not sure. Again, I think they're plastic. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, do they have it like a cargo pocket high on the hip? So, and I was like, they do. And I sent him a yeah. photo of the miniature. This one does it, has it. And it oh, came back crazy. as that. So he sent me a photo of the herringbone twill. And it was like, okay, US, uh, US dark green is going to be the best, um, best color to match that. That's crazy. And then we were talking about the the jackets and the webbing all being the same color, but the jackets faded faster. Yeah. Mm. So what I've done for, for my guys was I basically gave an extra highlight to the jacket. Uh, okay, that's really fascinating, way more in depth than I would have ever thought miniatures. <laughs> yeah, maybe it just needed to be, yeah. I'm like, paint it pink, I don't know. But uh, one of the really things that cool. I, I thought that was uh, kind of amazing is, so the all the ones on the spinner here, are the sort of mid-war um, uniforms. Mm -hmm. uh, and I painted these up for, to sort of represent the US Army at um, Casino, Monte Casino, mm -hmm. which was like a six month long campaign. Okay. And shortly after this, they changed something. So it, with these uniforms, the, uh, I don't know if you can see, but they've got the little uh, entrenching tools. On their back. Attached yeah. to the mm -hmm. uh, backpacks. And so later in 44, the entrenching tools were separate. Okay. So that's a, one way you can sort of determine whether it's before D-Day or after D-Day kind of thing. Oh, wow. And also, all those entrenching tools, the handles are painted brown violet, okay. the same color as the helmets, because rather than being like exposed wood. Right. Because again, in the factory, everything was just sprayed green. Yeah. With that brown violet sort of spray. That's nuts. Sort of What's really interesting is the history lessons that you can you can yeah. obtain while making while enjoying this hobby. Yep. Especially like like you said, you know, when you want to make something look as historically accurate and you you having a, such a big pool of friends that have right. yep. an interest in this, you walk away with, you know, some really interesting knowledge that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. 
Yep, for sure. So, and uh, our friends at our friends at Osprey, mm -hmm. Osprey have like hundreds and hundreds of uh, books on different uniforms. Right. And they've probably got dozens of books on the U.S. Army. But uh, yeah, thankfully having a friend like John is. Right. Saves me loads of time <laughs> leafing through all those books. And what is the color you're using for the base flesh? Is it the... Uh, uh, dwarf skin there. Okay. Yep. Also, James says, I would love to see you paint up some minis from Brigands and brown coats. Brigands and brown coats. Brigands, Brigands, Brigands and, brown coats. and brown coats. Can't talk. Okay. That's the uh, Gale Force 9 Firefly game, isn't it? I think so. I th yeah. That could be it good. It might be. But, uh, also, Michael says hello from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hey, hey Fayetteville. Hey. I grew up there. Stay safe. How close is that to the beach? Mm, about it's an inland. hour. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be kind of crazy with that. Yes. Because when I got home last night, my wife was watching with the Weather Channel. Mm-hmm. I was like, is this all anybody's talking about at the moment? Mm-hmm. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people are kind of interested in getting into painting historical minis, but they're worried that they're going to paint something the wrong, wrong right. way. And I think there's sort of three different ways to approach it. One is do as much research as you can. Sure. And loads and loads and loads of research and get it as close as, as possible um, to what you think it, it was. Or get re just copy off some other, <laughs> other people and get reasonably close yeah. to what it might be. But like, I'd like to say arguably close. Okay. Where you could say, well, it's just faded or they've just waded through water or something like that to yeah. change the tone of the the pants or whatever. Uh, or the paint them however you like. <laughs> just whatever colors you want. Yeah. And then when somebody says, well, that's not what they were like, and it's like, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea of uh, sort of learning as you go, yeah. learning some history. Well, I, when it comes to doing these kind of miniatures, you know, in, in opposed to uh, fantasy miniatures, uh, if you have an interest in painting soldiers, yep. you probably already have an interest in the history behind why those soldiers exist, even in a miniature form. So you're going to want to, you know, they, they, they probably would be more inclined to be, you know, looking up the accuracy of the, of the uniform yep. and all that stuff and the history behind all of it. Like you were saying, uh, if you were in what theater you're in would dictate what color of the cotton or wool, you know, that yep. they're wearing, so. Exactly. And yeah, you definitely, you're going to pre be predisposed yeah. to, to want to check it out. There's a fantastic meme that occasionally goes around in historical miniature wargaming circles, which is a, it's a picture of about 30 different uh, German army jackets laid out. Right. And they're all a different color. Ranging from like a like a mid green to a gray, okay, like a dark gray, and it's basically like, tell me again how <laughs> there was only one color of jacket, right? <laughs> that thing. And the color for the boots and the carbine. Uh, for the for my carbine, I used the um, mahogany brown, which is okay. uh, there. All right, thank and you. for the boots and strap, I used. Um, Red leather. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So. so, like uh, we mentioned already, is that we are using, for the most part, model color or acrylic colors by uh, Vallejo yep. today. And it is a very um, paint by number situation, but it actually is making these models look. <laughs> Really good. Yep. The uh, you can you can see as well once you worked out what colors you need, want to use where, mm -hmm. how you can just sit down and, 
can paint through five of them or ten of them or oh yeah that sort of thing. Um, just moving on between each each sort of segment. You know, there's my dude there. Right. And all okay. these miniatures that we're painting today obviously are available now at your local game store that carries Warlord miniatures. Yep. And you can uh, go to Warlord Mini or Warlord Games. Warlord Games. Yep. Um, I think it's just warlordgames.com. Okay. And check out all the cool products that they have. Yep. And There's a uh, Facebook group for Bolt Action. Oh, nice. Uh, surprisingly enough, just called Bolt Action. Nice. And uh, and it has to do with just the miniatures, or is it uh, the miniatures? In, the miniatures in the game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's a it's a very active group. A lot of people asking questions, and a lot of okay. people showing off their uh, their painted minis. Nice. Which is great. Also, Carl says, "Gotta fly." Cheers, all. Great seeing you. Hi, great Carl. seeing you too, Bye. Carl. Thanks for joining. James has to leave soon as well. Okay. Okay. Well, hey. just. Oh. I was gonna say, Kurt from Smirk and Dagger says, great seeing you in Indiana, and now back at painting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we have returned. Now what was this color? This one was uh, red leather. Oh, and so that one's for? You can use that for the um, either the strap on the gun. The gun. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you use this one for the, the boots, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, one thing that uh, sort of came up at the Alliance Open House, when I was doing some interviews, was I don't have a tagline. Oh. Rick has one. Rick has, we'll see you at the game store. That's sort of like that. <laughs> uh, sort of. So, But I, I need one, so I <laughs> thought we'd ask folks uh, what my tagline should be. Yeah, Dave and I were talking, and I was like, well, this could be some, and then Dave was like, wait, wait. you should save it. And ask, ask the, the mini people. painting crew. <laughs> yeah. What should uh, Dave's tagline be? Ask our peeps. You're a brave man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I didn't say I'd use <laughs> any of them, but what's Dave's tagline? What should it be? Yep. So obviously, I probably said something inappropriate as a suggestion along the lines of like, save another shrimp on the bobby for me. Right, but I guess that's not going to work out. So. No, because it was also terrible. It was yeah. the worst accent I've ever heard. <laughs> Dang it! I try. I'm not creative. All I can think of is like paint you later. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty good. <laughs> that could work. That's actually pretty good. I really yeah. love that. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh Todd. Todd Dumas says, work on those works in progress. Uh, oh, work on those works in progress? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I will admit, uh, I think, oh, who posted it up? I think it was Carl posted it. It was up Carl. A, posted up an image, and it started with, work in progress. <laughs> Give me your thoughts and comments. <laughs> and I was like, not touching that one. Not touching that one. It's fun, <laughs> yeah. So for those of you that don't know, Todd Dumas in the chat is my actual brother. Your actual brother? Yeah, my actual brother. Yeah. There you go. And it's kind of cool that he joins us. <laughs> Considering is. Uh, this is a, a new, whole new world to him. Yeah. That, uh, that I, the stuff that I do. But uh, his son, Austin, is into all of this. Or getting into all of this stuff. The gaming stuff. Cool. So it's very cool. So you're like, oh, I'm about to solidify, my, solidify myself as favorite uncle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. No, I was just saying, one thing we haven't mentioned about the Alliance Open House was the paint and take. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. We can talk about that now. Oh, we, had a lot of, we had a lot of people come out for that. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. There were, what, 80, 100 people? Something like that, yeah. Something like that. And most of them chose? The Owl Bear. The Owl Bear. <laughs> exactly. There the were real. choices? Yeah. Yeah, WizKids. Uh, <laughs> you might not have, might not have seen like that. There were so many owl bears being painted. I thought it was all owl bears. Mm -hmm. They had owl bears, um, dragonborn, dragonborn, and, and dwarves. No, no, no those dwarves were they were owls. Table. Yeah. Uh, the As Asmar. Oh, the Asmar. Um, yeah, the angel winged. Yep. Creatures. Those ones. And I painted up a dragonborn. I did an owl bear. Rick painted an owl bear. Johnny painted an owlbear as well. 
Yep. His second miniature ever. Did an awesome job. Yeah. Which somehow managed to look like Jake from Adventure Time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes it, <did. laughs> totally. it was the eyes. The, co the cold dead eyes. Look at this and like, huh. <laughs> well, he kind of gave the owl bear's eyes that owl moon glow. Yeah. And it gave him that, like you said, cold dead eyes. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. So that was that was really cool. Um, and we had a competition at the show. Yeah. We a paint set, the Nolzer's. Nolzer's uh, monstrous. Monstrous pigments. Yeah. Set. The big set. And yeah. uh, which had another owl there in it. Yeah. But the the winning model was a dragonborn. Yep. Yep. That was cool. And on. Our, on our booth on Sunday, uh, Leona and I sat down and painted. Yes. And we painted some um, dwarves. dwarves, dwarf barbarians. Yeah, they're yep. good. I, I actually have the dwarf barbarian in my bag cool. in the office because though building character this week is not going to be d and D. I I apologize to everybody. It's going to be this new Ragnarok. Oh, cool. Uh, Role-playing game that doesn't use dice at all. It uses yeah. runes. Oh, nice. To Rune stones? To do all, do all your um, powers and stuff. Excellent. And it looks pretty cool. That's going to be neat. Yeah. But I have it, and I want to show it off because I'm, I think it might be kind of cool just to take a picture of it and just have people stat it. Just have everybody out there watching just on the page just stat that character. Stat the, uh, the stat dwarf. Stat the dwarf. Right. Yeah. The dwarf barbarian that, strangely enough, has no beard. Yeah. This was really freaky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has no beard. Weird. Yeah. yeah. It was troubling. That was like kind of a pre-Rush equipment. It is. However, that was one of the things that we were talking about his background is maybe he did something in a barbaric rage that was super shameful and he had to shave it. Yep, had to shave his beard. And he's on a quest to uh, regain his honor and... Uh, he can't, uh, can't grow a beard again until he's done that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I think it could work. Also from the chat, Jason was asking, do you taste the paint when you lick the paintbrush? Sometimes, yes. Okay. Because yeah. he was saying it kind of makes him cringe a little. Does it? It is a little cringy. We apologize. <laughs> but uh, but he's new to painting. Sorry, not sorry. No. Um, <laughs> maple syrup. Uh, it's it is apparently a terrible habit, uh, but it's one that I have acquired uh, acquired many years ago, and I do all the time. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Uh, I know of many wonderful painters who do not. <laughs> eat um, their brushes. <laughs> I said they do not eat their brushes. Yeah, so where I use that to, to get a tip on the brush, and so I'm twisting it as I'm pulling it through my mouth, some people use their thumbs, and they'll, so they'll draw their brush across there. Uh, some people will, uh, James Wapple, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, he uses uh, old socks. So he'll cut off the, it's like the foot part of the sock and just have the, the ankle part on his wrist, kind of like a sweatband, okay. but he uses that to work huh. his brushes. Makes nice. Sense. So, uh, yeah, lots of different ways you can do it. And sometimes, yes, some of the, the paints taste absolutely terrible. Yes. And you go, oops. Why? You rinse it off <laughs> enough that uh, time. Uh, that's terrible. All right, I think I got my base done. You got the old base coats done? Mm-hmm. Cool. How about you, Rick? Pretty much, yeah. What do you think? I just got to put the metal on the on the rifle itself. Okay. The, uh, do you have gunmetal gray over there? Yep. Or? Oh, is that what we're doing for the gun? Yeah, okay. just pop, pop a little bit on there. Just kidding, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, I'm not ready. Um, that's one of the things as well. Uh, normally the the rifles would be uh, like a blackened metal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you wouldn't really see that. So you're not going to see that glint right. metal. But on miniatures, you want to sort of increase the uh, contrast. So rather than just having that fade away and be a really dark metal or dark or black, um, getting, giving a little pop of silver um, makes it, Stand it, out a it makes it read better as a, as a rifle or a submachine gun, that sort okay. of thing. Even though it's not 100% accurate. So I'm going to take the, uh, the minis off the spinner for the moment so that we can get ready to show our pre-wash models. I'm going to put the tank on instead. Yes. There we go. So this model is also by uh, Warlord Games. Um, it's a 156th scale. Okay. Um, 
M, I think this is an M4 A1 Sherman tank with a 75 millimeter gun. Yeah, earlier. How can I tell? I can't. It was a Sherman. I can't remember. Hmm? It's a Sherman. It's a Sherman, yeah, yeah definitely. But, uh, and the factories of Detroit pumped out. Lots of them. Thousands of them. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, there's a lot of fun painting tanks. For that one, I used uh, the brown violet. Again, the same color we used on the helmets. Okay. Um, so I painted the whole thing with the brown violet and then put the, the wash that we're about to put over it, uh, over the models okay. on the tank, and then dry brushed it back up. So. Nice. That was a lot of fun. It's hard to get in like, these little nooks and crannies sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of crazy in there. Are we going to look at your hmm? um, pre? Yep. yep. I'm going to pop mine up. And the others are there. Just finishing off the little bits and pieces. Hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry. Right. <laughs> it's okay. Here is quick, quick, quick. mine. Hey, not bad. Looks good. How do you do this one-handed? Oh, Wait, no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just look. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I landed in the paint. <laughs> no! We can save that. He's just dirty. It's just dirty. He fell in some mud, <laughs> like I did yesterday, walking down my sidewalk. Oh, that's right. <laughs> nope. Nope. See? Easy. There we go. Jason asks, will, um, will you put wash a wash on those or will you leave them as is? Uh, we'll put a wash over them. But what we'll do is rather than sort of picking out particular areas uh, with multiple different colors of wash, we're just gonna go for one, one wash over the entire model. Nice. Um, we're gonna use uh, some acrylic washes, okay. but uh, what we can also do with these is Use something like the Army Painter, um, Strong Tone, mm -hmm. uh, quick sh what it's called Quick Shade, which is kind of like a, um, a varnish. Right. Uh, but it comes in a tin. You can get the model, dip dip, dip it, dip the whole model in the tin, what? flick it off, flick all the the um, varnish off, and set it down to dry. Done. Come back like twenty four hours later, it'll be all dry, nice, beautifully shaded, and nice and protected. But, and, um, and then you can do some highlights on it? You can go back and do some highlights after that, yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll be able to do go back and do highlights after hours as well. Um, but this is going to be, this is much more controlled. It's right. much better if you don't have the opportunity to go outside and start <laughs> flicking models around. I don't know. That um, sounds actually quite glorious. It does sound like a lot of fun. Yeah. But what you can do there, if you don't want to do the dip and flick, flick you can actually get like a larger brush and... Um, just brush it on like we're going to with the, uh, with the <laughs> acrylics. Okay. So here's an important question that someone might ask. Yep. How would you best suggest to get the paint out of black yoga pants? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you probably want to do that now. <laughs> That's all right. I can wait. I'll wait. You sure? Sorry. Yeah. But the important thing to remember is <laughs> that um, <laughs> soap and water. Is that with the acrylic um, with the acrylic paints? Uh, when they dry, they become plastic. So if they're embedded in the if they're in the fibers there, while well, they're still wet. Um, so hopefully they weren't um, like super new. No, no, I've had these for a while. Yeah, that works. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a clutch. So I have a number of pairs of pants that are well, no longer. I, I was more worried about the white, and I didn't get anything on the white, but I got. All that <laughs> one of the things I'm thinking about doing is getting smocks made for us. That's an idea. Ooh, they I need a bib. Like a white, <laughs> like, like a white smock that has the painting happy little minis logo, logo on the front. Uh, I say you make them look like lobster bibs. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, sorry. Nah, I'll worry about it later. Okay. Well, paint's not gonna hurt anything. It must be painting pants. Two planes crashed due to paint. <laughs> paint on pants. All right. Oh, yeah. So you're using. I'm using the Army Painter Strong Tone. 
Okay. In contrast to Dave's use of the Agrax Earthshade. And you get to choose which one you want. I'll try whichever one's readily available. You can take a little bit of that <laughs> okay. if you want. Or you, oh, Dave one. There you go. There you go. All right, I haven't done um, the stain before, so just brushing it on lightly or yeah. heavily? Uh, just over the whole model, sort of uh, probably as e evenly as you can go. Uh, one thing that uh, folks might notice when the other when we almost finished models were going around was that there was a bit of a sheen to mm -hmm. them. A bit of a shine. A bit of a shine. No, I wasn't saying the machine with an accent. Oh, you weren't? No. Oh. Like Mr. Like Mr. Sheen. Oh. Polished oh. and yeah. puffed and... Anyway, <laughs> uh, so what you can do to get rid of that is uh, hit it with a, a spray matte varnish. Okay. Or a paint on matte varnish. It's gonna be a lot slower, but the spray matte varnish will be, be good. And with the Army Painter uh, Quick Shade, uh, mm -hmm. as we were talking, if you go through and do that. The dip and click. click. Mm -hmm. uh, let it sit for 24 hours, and then hit it with an anti-shine. Okay. Um, matte varnish, and then you can go and do the um, the highlighting. Okay. But uh, yeah, there are loads of people. Um, there are these who painted big armies mm -hmm. like this. They spent two days base coating everything. Right. Spent a couple of hours dipping and flicking, and then come back the next day, hit them with the the matte varnish, yeah. good base them, and good to go. Well, so I put yep. mine on the spinner already. I uh, used the uh, Army Painter Strong Tone to kind of show. What that looks like. Yep. And there's mine with the Agrax Earth Shade. Okay, don't drop him this time. And you also have Agrax Earth yes. Shade as well. Yep. And I think they look great. Yeah. Yep, I didn't put, apart from the gloss. Yeah. <laughs> as they dry, you know, dry and, and everything. Uh, and then like you said, up shading up some stuff on them, like I've seen yep. on the ones that you have completed to give them a little bit more depth. Uh, these yeah, guys are going to look amazing. If we pop a few in between. Yeah. I love the like grass and how some of the grass has flowers. I'm like, what? The yeah, those tufts. So detailed. Tufts. Yeah. So I uh, picked up the tufts at uh, Nova Open last week. Okay. From the uh, Warlord Games booth. And uh, yeah, they just work really well. Yeah, those look great. And what's funny is, that's pretty much all we can do today. Yeah. Because now they're all wet. I didn't even think of that when I uh, stubbed the horses. <laughs> <laughs> so, Should have put together like extra guys and then had stuff ready to work on from before. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we haven't talked about Netflix yet, but we're not going to. <laughs> okay, that's um, good. Go watch Iron Fist, season two, it's up. Um, I'm catching up on uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, I'm, yeah, okay. so I'm Because I've been away the last... Right. Four Sundays. Nice. So going back and checking that out. That's a good show. It is. Yeah. I think it's, it's really better good. now. Better than uh, The Walking Dead? No, better than it was when it first started. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, there are some people who argue that it's better than The Walking Dead. Yeah. I liked the premise a little bit different. How it's yeah. like the beginning of it, and you see like what happens when it first. That I found fascinating. Yep. This uh, this season has been really interesting with uh, where. So it's it's kind of after the last season of. Walking Dead, mm -hmm. so it's it's caught up. It's, it's oh. leapt ahead, mm -hmm. um, sort of three or four years. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Sorry. No, it's good. You're good. Uh, but we have a group for all of you that may be just tuning in called Painting Happy Little Minis here on Facebook. Just yep. search Painting Happy Little Minis and jump into the group. Request to join. It's a great community with a lot of great uh, painters on all skill levels. Yep. And if you're someone who's just getting into the hobby and want to. Uh, Get some new um, tools for your toolbox. Yep. Ask some questions. Show us what you're working on. And we've got some great painters in there that are really open to sharing their knowledge. Dave, Josh from uh, Mini Painting Studios, Drew from One Inch Heroes, uh, Jason, Jason from Realmsmith TV. Yep. Um, shoot, every, there's Rogue so many. What's Jeff, that? Jeff. Yeah. Jeff pops in there. Jeff. Jeff All Jenkins. Jeff. Jeff Jenkins. Jeff, Jeff Hall. Hall. Jeff Hall. Yep. Forgot about um, that one. There's also uh, Terry Latorco's in there. Yep. Um, there's a lot of really yep. amazing talent, and uh, they're there to just unload all their knowledge onto you. Don't yep. get don't get uh, intimidated by any means. It's a great it's a great spot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we like seeing your guys's work because uh, it really shows off 
the the skill in this hobby that is just beautiful. Yep. Yeah. So I gotta say, uh, thanks to I think it was Bart, Bart Hurd, mm -hmm. uh, who posted pictures of his uh, terrain crate. Mm -hmm. <gasps> that was so cool. He's yeah, good. Yeah, he's been doing some fantastic work on on those. So the shelves and you know, oh, how we, how we I went love through that. and did the uh, the bookcases. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he did the bookcases with all the books on there, but each book has a different. Binding, D different binding, yeah. sort of thing. It looks like a that's fantastic insane. bookshelf. Yeah, that's he did cool. The, uh, when he painted the um, mantelpiece mm -hmm. uh, pieces and sort of paths, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the smoke up over the stones, oh, the smoke residue oh, up over the stones. Oh wow! Did you see the? Uh, he also put up the um, the smithy. Yeah. Oh man, that looks so good too. It's like, and for those of you that don't know, Bart Bart came here and did a D and D one shot with us. Oh, he, cool. He, he was the awesome. DM. Had Dwarven Forge all over the table, right. and we ran a game. So if you want to go back in our archives on YouTube, you can watch that video. It's a lot of fun. Uh, to, and and it's Dungeons and Dragons, which is always fun to watch people. Play. <laughs> um, yeah. So Bart, good job, uh, and we love you, man. You're a great dude, and. Uh, Let's see, what else we got? Well, I was going to say, um, you just reminded me that, so I knew going into Alliance Open House that you're a big D&D &D fan, mm -hmm. but I didn't quite realize just how much. Yeah. When he was around, all the folks from uh, from Paizo and uh, and everybody who was doing D&D &D related uh, product, there was the, the twinkle in his eye. Did he become a fangirl? He, he did totally. Fangirl. Oh, he absolutely. Totally I, I squeal, I run around and... <laughs> I, I get really giddy when it comes to the, because it it really was the thing when I was growing up that was uh, my escape, you know, um, go, having been in foster care as a child, uh, that was the thing that took my mind out of foster care, yeah. and I had a really fun community at the Red Dragon in uh, Davison, Michigan, was my hobby store that I I, I would go to during during those times, and uh, they they're the ones that introduced me to Gen Con right. and all that stuff. It was yeah. like. So I will always have an affinity towards that product, and the fact that it is in such a huge boom right now yep. is so cool. And I just want to say thank you to Pierce from Paizo, by the way. You, you got me all, like, teary-eyed. <laughs> uh, so they have the new Armory book for Starfinder, and he went around and had a bunch of uh, publishers and staff and uh, other people in the industry sign it like a yearbook for me. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> and some of the stuff everybody so said was just, yeah, just beautiful. And I love you all. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. Aww. Yeah, I'm getting a little great. emotional now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was great to see. Great to see. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, D and D that boat from WizKids. Boat from WizKids. Yeah. Amazing. Wait, do you guys see that video? You, you keep your eyes open. Yeah, it's huge. It's like that. Big. It's monstrous. Yep. Uh, wait till you see this ship that Boys Kids has got coming out yep. uh, for yeah. the D&D &D miniatures and stuff. It's going to be really cool. That was definitely uh, uh, definitely awesome. Yeah, so that was... Star? What's that? The Fallen Star? Is that what they're calling it? I think so, yeah. I think you're right. I don't know how I feel about that name. <laughs> one of Justin, the cool, fix it. One of the, really, well, one of the really cool things was the uh, the figurehead on the boat yeah. was a dragon. So the, the dragon, when you oh, pull it, cool. wings back. Oh, nice. Oh, neat. And the, um, the anchor... It was a dragon's claw. Oh, that's cool. So I like, like that idea. Like that. Mm. So I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't call it the falling star then. I'd call it like, I don't know. What would you guys call it? I like the Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, The Stormbringer. Or the Stormbringer. Okay. Yeah. The, and then you can write a module, the last the last trip of the Stormbreaker, where it actually goes out and gets destroyed. Right. Yep. Yes. But, you know, in an epic way. Yep. By a Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Kraken model was awesome too. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so much there's good so stuff. Much cool stuff going. <sighs> I'm trying to think. What was the? Uh, oh, the dragons. Yeah. The new dragons, the unpainted yep. dragons coming from WizKids. Yep. Sick. I mean, we're supposed to be talking about Warlord D&D, <laughs> but you, you brought it up. But uh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. But uh, yeah, so Warlord Games, go check them out. Oh. Go to your local game store. Become part of your local community. Oh, you got a Jeep too. Oh, I got a half track. Oh, half track. So I'm gonna. These off, so we're gonna let those dry. Um, and what I'll do is I'll take them away and do a little bit of uh, touch-up work on the, or a little bit of highlighting work, on uh, on one of them, and we can compare what the oh, cool. results are. Yeah. Uh, but I'll show you this as well. So this is M3 half track that I'm. Oh, that's beautiful. On that's cool. So did you freehand yep. the uh, the that's lettering on there? No, no, the that's uh, that's all decals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So one where you um, 
what I usually do for my decal work mm -hmm. is put down a layer, of, like brush on layer of uh, gloss varnish. Okay. So it's a, sort of as smooth a surface as possible. Then you put, so like water slide decals, mm -hmm. slide it off onto the, the piece, let it dry. Uh, maybe put some microsol, which is a uh, sort of product that um, melts plastic, essentially. So it, it melts that carrier film into the background. Oh, and you hit it again with, um, once that's dry, put gloss varnish over it again to right. sort of seal it in beneath another layer. Right. And then spray it with the matte varnish at the there end. There it is. Hmm. And it just looks like it's supposed to be. Supposed there. to be. Yeah. yeah. You that's sort of so cool. lose all of those other sort of um, the edge of the film oh. around it. So. I want to use that in my condoms now. Nice. <laughs> and one of the, the cool things as well is with that microsole that I mentioned. Um, so this is a scout car that I'm working on. But you can see this on the back. Yes. So that's... Uh, it doesn't decal. even that's look like a, a decal yeah, at like all. Yeah, it looks like a paint on. Yeah. So like that's on ridiculous. The, on the spinner too. Actually, I won't put it on the spinner. What am I talking about? Sorry. Sorry, Jamie. Sorry, Leona. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being stupid here. Oh, wow, yeah. So you can see that, that decal there. But you can yeah, see Yeah, it just looks like you painted it on. That's incredible. There. But that's laying it over, and while it's sort of sitting on there, mm. just painting the microsol on. onto it. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. That looks amazing. So you can wow. get it into those, get it to stretch out and right. fall into those things. So yeah, it just looks like, looks like it's been stenciled on and then scuffed up a bit. Ridiculous. That's we crazy. have one question, one last yep. question. Right. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Chris Harold asks, any ideas how to make some of the Master Gundam models look battle scarred? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, we do have that information, uh, and I would challenge you to go to the Facebook group, Painting Happy Luminies, join up, ask the question there, and watch all the answers you will receive, and they're going to be amazing. Yeah, um, <laughs> Dave will answer it there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go in and answer it there as well. Yep. And it wouldn't be a bad thing uh, if you tune in on th Thursday, maybe we'll have a model that we are painting that we can demonstrate that. Uh, yeah, that could be a possibility. Cause yeah, we haven't talked about what we're doing on Thursday yet. We haven't, because if we have our palette back, we could maybe take another look back at the um, Monster Apocalypse. Oh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Actually, that'd be great. Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't think we'll have it back. Though. <laughs> but anyway, we'll fingers, see. Fingers we'll crossed. See. It might be Thursday. <laughs> it might be another time. Yeah. Well, we, will, we will definitely uh, ask the group. Yeah. Ask the group, and uh, yeah. we'll answer. So. And then I'll go to your local game store, become part of your local community, share your knowledge, and ask all the questions of the painting maestros at your local game store, and just find all sorts of other cool stuff to play. I'm Rick. I'm Mia. And I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. We're super excited to share that our new book, The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, is now available. We love tabletop gaming as much as you do, and we're so thrilled to share the finished book with the community. This book covers the history of the tabletop industry, from classic board games like Monopoly to collectible card games like Magic, and of course, RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons. The book also highlights some of the top talent in the industry, featuring interviews with Peter Atkinson, Matthew Mercer, Larry Elmore, and many more. Plus, we chatted with collectors from all walks of life who shared their own knowledge and insight about tabletop collecting. We also discuss everything from the impact of crowdfunding on the current state of the industry, as well as take a look at all sorts of ways to preserve your collection for years to come. This book provides a perfect snapshot of the tabletop industry at large and shows what makes this hobby so great. You can head into your local game store or comic shop right now and pick up your copy of the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. If they don't have it in stock, you can order your copy through Previews, through Game Trade Magazine, or through gemstonepub.com. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.